If you've ever eaten a fish, did you stop to wonder what the fish ate? Not surprisingly, living things require energy to survive and carry out daily activities. To get energy, every living thing needs to eat something or have a way to convert energy from a non-living supplier like the sun. In the northern Gulf of Alaska, there are literally thousands of organisms interacting with and depending on one another to thrive and survive in intricate ways we commonly call the food web. And if you count up all the microscopic organisms like bacteria, there are actually millions and millions and millions of organisms consuming each other right this second. Let's take a closer look at how it works in one food chain that is just part of a much larger food web. Our journey begins with autotrophs, like plants and trees on land, that can make their own food from non-living sources, in this case, the sun. There is an impossibly vast number of autotrophs, like these single-celled organisms, that harness energy from the sun to convert carbon dioxide and water into simple sugars through a process called photosynthesis. Oxygen is a byproduct of this process, which is awesome news for all the people and animals on this planet that breathe it. Who's this? It's a microscopic type of algae called a cryptophyte. Cryptophytes photosynthesize just like plants do on land. But unlike rooted plants, they can move. Look at them go! They propel themselves through the water by rapidly moving two thread-like projections called flagella. Ouch town! Population you, bro! Well, that was a cryptophyte, but it just became food for Laboea strobola. Ooh, fancy. See those disco wiggly things? They're called cilia, and critters that have them are called ciliates. These ciliates are pretty special because they're mixotrophs, which means they have more than one way to harness energy. They use their cilia to chase down prey items like that delicious cryptophyte, but they can also mix it up and photosynthesize. In fact, they actually steal the ability to perform photosynthesis from the cryptophytes that they eat. That's like if you could start making sugar from the sun, water, and carbon dioxide every time you ate some spinach. Don't! Oh! Another one bites the dust when cruising krill are on the loose. This krill, also known as euphosid, is an MVP in the ocean food web in the Gulf of Alaska and beyond with an important job to do. Ciliates are just too small for most bigger animals to eat, but krill have secret strategies for nabbing the ciliates that animals further up the food chain don't. Once the krill takes down the ciliates, a capelin can just cruise in and swill the krill. That means energy and nutrients the krill contained, including the ciliates they ate, are now available to benefit the capelin. We can think about krill as an energy-translating powerhouse, making ciliate energy available to all kinds of bigger critters in the Gulf of Alaska, like that capelin that... Wait, what? Where'd you go? These common murres are aerial speed demons and skilled aquatic hunters that perform spectacular dives to chase after schooling fish. Underwater, murres use their wings like sea lions use flippers as a form of propulsion and they can cover not only distance but depth with recorded dives that exceed 500 feet down. Okay, science team, let's review. So, the cryptophyte put up a great fight but sadly got ate by a rude silly ape. Then a thrill-seeking krill ate its fill, only to be taken by a hungry capelin who in a swift blur was chomped by a murr. At this point, you might be wondering whether the creatures we just saw are also important to other life in the Gulf of Alaska, and the answer is a great big yes. Remember the krill that was snapped up by the capelin? If it wasn't a capelin, it could have been a lion's mane jelly, pink salmon, or even a humpback whale. In a healthy, resilient ecosystem, most organisms play multiple roles. 
when we take a step back to look at all the roles an organism plays in the environment, we go from talking about a food chain to talking about a food web. The food web in the Gulf of Alaska has so many more interactions and interconnected relationships, and who eats who and when may even change depending on season, how old each critter is, weather patterns, and so many other variables. On our next expedition, we will voyage on to discover the amazing food webs in the Gulf of Alaska.